connected to pilot edge. Testing one two, testing one two, check one two. All right, uh, doing a little test flight, not test flight, do a little practice flight here tonight. Uh, before dinner, let's fire this baby up. But first, let's go through our normal procedures. Let's go to the glove box. Let's get our flight information here on uh, hours and so forth. We got 226 on the Hobbs. We got 226.2 to start. We've got 148.7.7 on the uh, engine hours. Okay, let's go back to close that glove box. Close it. And let's go back to the main view here. Okay, let's fire this baby up to give you a little look at the instruments here. Let's get started. Let's put our keys in the ignition. That's a good place to find them. Always. All right. Battery 2 is on. Let's go look at the throttle quadrant. Let's tilt it up a little bit here. No green light, which you would see right here if there was a diode issue. You would see that. There's nothing happening there. Let's go to battery 2 or battery 1, excuse me. And that will fire up here in a second. Let's do a quick look over here and see if... Uh, okay, and uh, let's just do a quick look down here real quick to see. OBS Studio, and that is looking good. Okay, let's go... Uh, Enter, enter, enter. We've got 73 gallons of fuel. Let's put that in my little flight notes here. And uh, let's go back over to hit that little warning light right there. Okay, let's uh, now let's go down to the throttle quadrant here. Actually, let's put our strobe lights on. Let everybody know we're getting ready to uh, do some here. We're going to put our mixture full. We're going to put our power full. We're going to push on the high boost prime here. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4. That's all good. Now we're going to go back up top again. Look out the window here. Okay, let's, then we're going to pull our throttle back to 1 quarter inch right there. And we're going to go back up to the instrument view here. And we're going to start 1, 2, 3. I like to put that in both here. And then I'm going to give it some boost pump here. Let's go back down to the throttle quadrant. I'm going to move this to boost pump right here. Let's come back up top. Let's go to the instruments here. And let's get her fired up. Let me get a little bit tilt up so I can see that propeller. All right, let's go. One, 1,000, two, 1,000. Okay, now let's give it a go. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's come back down to the instruments here. All two is on. All, all one and two is on. Avionics is on. That's all good. Let's go up to the bottom here. We're going to put in 11915 here in the uh, COM2. We're going to switch that over. We've got 121.9. we got 120.1. Let's put that right here. That's our tower frequency for Santa Monica. Okay, let's flip that over to active. We're probably going to get 125.2 on the departure frequency here. So let's put that in here. If that's not what it is, we'll change it later. Okay, now we're all set here at the moment. Okay, so now let's come back up to the default here. And now let's contact, let's go back down to our autopilot and comms. And I am now going to switch over to, oops, let's get that out of there, uh, mic 2. Altimeter 29 or 87. Arriving and departing runway 21. Visual approach is in use. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact you have information hotel. Because that's hotel we got. Take off on 21. Santa Monica Municipal Airport. A is information hotel. 2355 Zulu. Wind 230 at 7. Visibility 10. Few clouds at 500. Temperature 18. Dew point 16. Altimeter 29 or 87. Arriving and departing runway 21. 
visual approach is in use. Read backhaul runway assignments and hold short instruction. Advise on initial contact you have. Okay, so now we're going to switch over to uh, ground and we're going to give them a call uh, with hotel and uh, request our uh, IFR clearance here. So let's do that right now. Sierra 768 Foxtrot Sierra, uh, excuse me. Santa Monica Ground, Cirrus 768 Foxtrot Sierra at Northwest Parking with Hotel. I'd like to pick up my IFR flight plan to Kilo Whiskey, Victor, India. Palm Springs for approach. Mr. Park, Palm Springs Tower, Mooney 17 November. Sierra, verifying to land runway one three. Everyone, one three, one. Sierra, runway one three right, clear to land. One three right, clear to land. Seven over, Sierra. Santa Monica ground, Sierra seven six eight Foxtrot Sierra at the Alpha two parking with hotel. I'd like to pick up my IFR flight plan to Kilo Whiskey Victor India. 768 Foxtrot Sierra Santa Monica Ground, I heard your request. You're clear to the Whiskey Victor India Airport. Fly her runway heading until reaching the Los Angeles 310 radial. Then turn right heading 250 with no delay. Radar vectors for Ventura. Direct San Marcos, Romeo Zulu Sierra. Victor 25. Salina Sierra November Sierra. Direct. Maintain 3000. Expect one six thousand five minutes after departure. Departure frequency one two five point two. Squawk seven one four three. Okay, uh, we're cleared to uh, Watsonville Airport. On departure, we're going to fly runway heading at the LAX 310 radial. We're going to make a right turn heading 250, then radar vectors for Ventura, then direct San Marcos, then Victor 25, then Salinas direct. 3,000 to start, 16,005, 125.2 on the departure, and 7143 on the squawk. 8 Fox Shots here. 8 Fox Shots here, we back correct, thanks. Program that, and I'll come back to you for taxi. Eight five five here. Okay, so let's go down to the instruments here. Okay, so uh, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to this throttle quadrant. I'm going to go tilt it up here a little bit and uh, show you what we're doing here. Okay, up here on the FMS, this is where I'm going to be programming all this in on my uh, physical version here, which is from Real Sim Gear. If uh, interested in Cirrus gear. There's really two options. Uh, Real Sim gear and Noble Flight System. So let me get this all done. So I'm going to go backwards. We're going to go transponder. We're going to go 7143. And that is now, should be in here, and it is. Right there is 7143. I checked that off. We've got 125.2 up top. That's good. We've got 3,000 in the altitude select, which you see right here. That's all set. Uh, we're going to program a right turn of 250, so I'm going to go and change that on our heading mode right here. 250. Okay, great. Now i got to go and put this all into our flight plan here, so let's do that. We're going to go delete flight plan. Start all over again. KSMO to LAX, L. A X. That's that little. L A X. Then Ventura. V T U. Enter. Enter. Then uh, then R Z S. R Z S. Enter. Enter. Then Victor 25. Okay, so let's go up here. And we want menu load airway. Let's go down there. It's Victor 25. Enter. We want Salinas. And then uh, got all that set. There's all that. And then we want KW Kilo Whiskey Victor India. Enter. Enter. Okay, now I don't have all that on mine, so let's just go Victor. I'm going to go change this on my iPad now, so let me see if I can throw that in here, and uh, we'll see if that actually works here 
and uh, now you see my iPad here. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to put in after Victor. I'm going to insert after Ventura. We're going to put RZS. I like to have these all synced up, and after RZS, we're going to put in Victor two five. In between and now we've got everything synced up here and you can see where we're at and let's go back to our cockpit direct which should be just yours truly here so now we're all synced up there so let's go back up top now and now we can call all for right, our round, taxi uh, clearance uh, one, four, three, Fox, drive, echo at the west round we have Juliet we're ready to do uh, ready to taxi for the VFR circuit two zero left okay before we do that, let's come all the way up top, up here on our flight plan. Let's make that the active leg. And some little quirk here of, uh, there it is. Okay, so now we're going to do something else here. I'm going to click the OBS. Then I'm going to come over here to our... Uh, to my FMS. So let's just go down here to the FMS. And I'm going to click up here under course. Well, actually, it's a little bit different one than I have. So, um, so then let's dial in at 310. Three, terminal one with Sierra, ready to taxi. I'm setting my OBS to that LAX 310 radial. And that's where I'll make my right turn. Okay, so now that's Echo all set. Now we're all set. Walker 847, contact Van Ass Tower, 119.3. 119.3, Walker 847. Santa Monica Route Sierra 768, Fox Route Sierra at uh, Alpha 2 with Hotel Like to Taxi to 21. 768, Fox Route Sierra, I'm at 21, Taxi via Alpha, Alpha 5. 21 to Alpha, or Alpha 21 via Alpha, Alpha 5, 8 Fox Routes here, thank you. All right, so now we are ready, ready to roll. Walker 847 crossing Janat on the Island Zulu runway. Okay, now let's just do a quick uh, check of something here before we go. Pardon me for a second, folks. I'm doing a little. Okay, hey folks. Okay, I'm going to do a little, <laughs> do a little non-piloting stuff. So, hey, uh, hello Jason, hello Eric, and hello Eduardo Francesca or Fonseca. Uh, just messing around. What sim am I using? I'll tell you really quickly. I have a little mutt setup. I have a Noble Flight Sim Cirrus Flight Stick. I have a uh, real sim gear PFD MFD uh, in switch panel. I have a real sim gear FMS. And I have a uh, Noble Flight Sim throttle quadrant here, and I'm controlling my views and so forth uh, through uh, a little stream deck uh, USB controller here with a number of different options. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to... I'll check in every once in a while, gentlemen. If you have some questions, post them there. I'm just messing around tonight and hit the stream button and to see if anybody was paying attention, and there you are. Okay, so um, thanks for the nice comments, Jason. And hopefully, Eric, that answers your question. And Eduardo, always nice to see you're up here learning. Okay, back to business here now. Okay, now we're going to take off our break. Take a little look to the left here, and we're going to get going here. Number two, and off Lima, SoCal approach. Good evening. Clear to the Los Angeles class Bravo airspace by the coastal route southbound. Maintain the VFR at 5,500. The Los Angeles altimeter, 297. Okay, now I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to try to do multitask here with all my stuff here. So let's go down here. We're going to just go through before starting. We did all that. We're taxing. And we're taxing. We got all that stuff going. And then we're going to go to before takeoff checklist up in the runway. In the uh, run up area. Okay. All right, there we go. So Watsonville Airport is where you fly if you're going to Santa Cruz. 
Solution 3, decree Los Angeles Tower, my 2 4 left, clear for takeoff. For you folks that don't live out here in California, that is on the other side, the north side of uh, Monterey Bay. Some great golf courses in that neighborhood, including one called Pasa Tiempo in Santa Cruz, and that's where uh, I'm going to play some golf next week, so just kind of practicing the approach in there, which I haven't done for a while here. Okay. Okay, here we are coming up at Santa Monica. It's always well represented here. Looks pretty much like the real deal, except the run-up is going to be over here at Alpha 5 on my right-hand side. Typically, it's not typically, it's always on the left-hand side if you actually get to Santa Monica. So a little tip for you if you actually make it out this way. And i got to do a little clean-up here already, I can see. i got to change my altimeter setting. Okay. All right, so I'm going to come over here in the run-up area, get all my Number stuff together. Okay, let's swing her around here. Okay. All right, let's put on our parking brake right here. Let me go put in 2987. is our altimeter. Get that all, right, all set start, here. Now, what I'm going to do is my little takeoff briefing right now. Uh, our elevation here in Santa Monica is 180, which you can see right here. 600 feet above that is our CAPS available uh, altitude in the Cirrus. And uh, 2,000 feet above that is our best CAP. So in the event we have a, an engine issue on the runway, I'm going to pull the power, hit the brakes, and abort the takeoff. If I have an engine issue on runway 21 before uh, from 780 feet in between 780 and 280. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've got to all this. Turn this down a little bit. Um, I'm gonna pull back the mixture, turn off the tanks, turn off the ignition, and land straight ahead on a little golf course right off the runway. If I have an engine issue between 780 and 2180, I'm gonna continue straight ahead. I'm gonna pull the parachute, mixture off, tanks off, ignition off, and we're gonna float onto that golf course. Over 2180, I'll have some time to turn around and come back to the airport here. Okay, so now let's do our takeoff before takeoff checklist. Our doors are latched and closed. Our caps handle would normally be right here on my Cirrus. Okay, our seatbelt shoulder is absolutely air conditioned. Not going to be worrying about that. Right now, it looks like our right tank is our our uh, fullest tank, so I'm going to switch to that. Our fuel quantity we've got up here, which is 72 gallons, plenty of fuel to get up there and back. Fuel selectors on the fullest tank, our fuel pump, which is uh, down here, is in the boost pump, and it stays on in my uh, Cirrus SR22 G6, and that's the way I put it on this one as well. Okay, our flaps, let's go check our flaps. Now we put our flaps down. Flaps one, you can see them retracting right there. That's all good. Come back up top. Our transponder is set to 7143 as instructed. That is a check. Our transponder is good. Autopilot test. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to tilt down here a little bit so you can see the stick here. Okay, um, we've got 250, so I'm going to go into autopilot mode here, and then I'm going to press heading, and you're going to see, yeah, it's not really moving here, okay, let's, let's go up here a little bit and see if we can see that better, okay, you see the pink thing, so that is actually a little check, not quite the same in the plane here, um, and we're all good there, navigation radios are set, 125.2 is set up top, okay, let's just go over to one right now, uh, that is all set. Our cabin heat defrost, not using that today, so we're going to hold on our brakes here, and then we're going to go to 1700. Let's go to our engine instrument. We're going to push that knob right there, and we're going to go to 1700. There was a little, little sticky tonight on the throttle. Let's get her down to 17. Come on, see. There you go. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my switches here. I'm going to put on my nav lights. And note uh, any changes over here. Our landing light goes on. You'll see it puts a little bit more on Alt 1. Put on Alt Ice. That should Plus move it on, on real plane. It would. Tito, he's going to blow up all 2. Okay, so now we're going to go over here and we're going to check our mags. So we've got our left mag here. And you'll see that the drop 
is about 90 and our EGTs are rising. So let's go back to both and EGT settled back. So now let's go over to right and we've got an acceptable drop there and EGTs rising back over to both and then back to 1,000 RPMs here. Let's get her in there. It's a little sticky tonight. Okay, there you go. Um, I'm going to come back here to our checklist. Hang on. Power lever is good and alternator all that is good. Voltage is typical again. Mine is about plus two. Zero is what it is on this. Pedo heat is not required so I'll turn that off. Ice is not required. I'll turn that off. Uh, I'll leave my nav strobe and landing lights on for now. Magnetos will check engine parameters. As you can see right here is nothing but green. We love that green, 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 green. Okay, flight instruments are set. We're going to put it in the takeoff GA mode. A little button on my noble flight flight sim Cirrus throttle quad under the under the throttle. A little button you press for takeoff, go around, and that's what sets these uh, wings here at seven uh, degrees of pitch. Okay, flight controls free and correct. Let's go check them outside here. Left, up, right is down. Elevator working. Everything's working back there. Okay, that's all good. Now let's go trim. We're going to set our trim. There's a little trim notch right, right, right there. You see takeoff. Now you know we're good there. So I'm going to click check there. Autopilot, we've disconnected now. We're, I know how to take off. So we're going to go to our next checklist, which is going to be our climb checklist. And then we're going to go get back to the map here. And let's go back up top. Okay, we're all ready to go now. I'm going to take off my brake. I'll turn up the audio just a little bit in my ear so I can see what's going on. Okay. Uh, remain the street. You walk in at 50. No one's here. Charlie, Charlie to parking and monitor the ground. Charlie to parking, monitor the ground. Thank you so much. One's here, Charlie. Okay, so we're going to taxi up to 2 1. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm going to do a quick check here and see how we're doing on everything here and see if we've got some folks still there and see if we've got some questions for everybody. Okay, let's go to chat. Um, Philly Pilot, safe pilot. Hey, <laughs> safe flight, Steve. Uh, Philly Pilot, you're the guy I met uh, in Knoxville, correct? I'm pretty sure that is. I got a picture my wife's really good with pictures okay I'll come back a little bit later once we get off the ground I'm gonna take my own advice which I don't do very often stop talking and start flying here okay so now we've switched over to so com, here, com down, one and, and now I'm gonna contact tower and get out of Dodge here thank you so much for everything you've done taxi uh, Charlie to the um, parking and we'll contact you for I rating okay week. trim flaps mixture boost we're all set Santa Monica Tower, Sierra 768, Foxtrot Sierra, holding short runway 21 at Alpha 5, ready for departure. Sierra 768, Foxtrot Sierra, Santa Monica Tower, runway 21, quick for takeoff. 21, clear for takeoff, 8 Foxtrot Sierra, thank you. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to get on out here. A 3 Foxtrot Echo, runway 20 left, quick for the option. We're use all that runway. Johnny Ground, Seminole 204, Lima Echo Information, Julia, Clay Lacey, Taxi Tower, run up. Number 204, Lima okay, Echo. Okay, get her on the center line. The there we are. Okay, now we're going to smoothly put in the throttle, get it going, get some traction there, and then all the way in. Eyes down the runway. The center maintain 2,500, Colonel 1988. We're going to gently ease back on that baby right now, and we're in the air. Flaps at 90. Gonna trim it right here. We're gonna set our flight level Middle change field, indicated down. airspeed here uh -huh. on 20. Gonna At trim it down a little bit. With information X-ray, would like flight following to. Now, uh, once this pink line standard. starts moving in, that means we're approaching that LAX 310 radio. Skyhawk. Thank Caps you. available. Can you repeat the squawk code again, please? November 7, Tango Whiskey, squawk 2026, 2026. 
Okay, now you're seeing that that uh, pink line moving here. So now I'm going to switch into heading mode, and I'm going to start my turn to two five zero. Santa Monica Tower 8 Fox Shots here, request frequency change. R26 right, ready. 8 Fox Shots here, uh, contact departure, sorry. Contact in departure, 8 Fox Shots here, thank you. Southwest 110, R26 right, clear for takeoff. 26 right, clear for takeoff, Southwest 110. So Cal Approach, Sierra 768, Foxtrot Sierra, 2,600, climbing 3,000. Sierra 768, Foxtrot Sierra, so Cal Departure, rate of contact, clear Rick Ventura, climb and maintain 4,000. Direct Ventura, climb, maintain 4,000, 8 Foxtrot Sierra. Okay, so I'll come down Victor, enter, enter, and then nav, and then I'm going to hit the autopilot now, and... Uh, busy on some other stuff. Okay, so our manifold pressure is going to switch my tanks here over to the left here. Let me check my throttle quadrant, make sure that's what's going on, and it is. I'm going to sync up my heading. All right, so you get a good look at everything that's going on right there. Switch over to our right tank here. Let's make sure we're on the right tank. We are. Okay, we're at 4,000 now. All right, so I'm going to pull back my power right now to 29.5-ish here. I'm going to pull back the mixture to about 16.2-ish, which should give me about 75%. And there you go. Now I know from experience that the uh, the next frequency is likely to be 12865, so I'm just going to put that in there ahead of time while I got a little free time here. That's the key I've learned in flying IFR, which is every free moment is a chance to take care of some business. I'll advise when I have information to you and I'll head to the Huntington Beach Pier. Here they call me. Southwest 110, contact departure. Departure, Southwest 110. Okay, there's that beautiful view I never get tired of. There's uh, Malibu. Pacific Palisades, actually. Okay, so right now we are at Direct Ventura. We're at 4,000 feet. We're in GPS mode. Autopilot is in. November 10 Now, if you guys are flying uh, the sim, I hope you're using Pilot Edge. Yeah, what yeah, a great tool that, that is. Now yeah, I'm going to go back to the map here for a second and see if uh, the map. Okay, so we're outside the Bravo airspace right now, which you can see is right here. And uh, there was another one calling that was blocked. Colonel, 
Coming tower, Skyhawk 143 Foxtrot Echo, Mayfield down runway 20 left, full stop. Observer 3 Foxtrot Echo, runway 20 left, clear land, looks like you disappeared again. Check your connection to the network, please. All right, we're, we're clear land, 20, 20 left, uh, and we'll, we'll try that again. Foxtrot Echo. Middle field, uh, ground, ready to taxi, 557 Tango Risky. Remember 557 Tango Whiskey, the ATC facility is Bakersfield, so it's Bakersfield's ground, and right 30 left taxi via hotel. Via hotel, 30 All right, somebody asked, am I planning any... Sorry. Somebody asked, am I planning any... Uh, I think it was Jason there, am I planning any... Climb and maintain 8,000. Climb maintain 8,000, 8 Fox Trots here. Okay, there's 8,000. Now, in my series, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go full mixture, full power, and then I'm going to go indicated airspeed, and I'm going to change that to 120 knots, 125 knots, probably. Jolly Ground, Seminole 204, Lima Echo, continue. The answer to that question, am I planning any long cross-country trips? The answer is yes. I'm going to be heading down to Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, in about two and a half, three weeks to go play golf at the Colonial Country Club, which I'm looking forward to. Okay, so there is what we see here. So our indicated airspeed, 125. I'm climbing to 1,500 feet a minute. I'm going to 8,000 feet right now. I got my heading synced up. We're heading direct Ventura at the moment here. As you can see over the map here, we're kind of over the middle of uh, the mountains here. And there you see what it looks like out the window here. Pretty spectacular. And there is our, yeah, the beginnings of our little marine layer that we see out here in California quite a bit. Now you can see I've got the uh, sexy yellow. <laughs> color on my Cirrus, my flight sim Cirrus. Uh, wouldn't have the guts to buy that. I have kind of went stock, stock silver. Something a little bit more uh, classic look here. My wife would have shot me if I got a yellow plane. All right, there we are. There's a view over the San Fernando Valley. All right, so we're heading up to 16,000 feet here. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Actually, I'll, I'll wait. One three five five eight five shots here. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to go back down here. We're going to go one three five five. Now, normally we would have gotten point with you approach, but we'll, we'll go with it. Los Angeles Center, Sierra 768, Fox Shot Sierra 6,900, climbing 8,000. 768, Fox Shot Sierra, Los Angeles Center, climb and maintain 16,000, Santa Barbara altimeter 2987. Climb maintain 16,000, 2987 on the altimeter. 2987. Okay, so now those are all set. So now we've set our new altitude of 16,000. We're going to keep an eye on our. Um, our instruments over here, particularly the CHTs right here. Uh, I read a great book by a guy named Mike Bush, who's like the uh, the CHT whisperer. Okay, we're going to put on our pedo heat here. We're going to turn off our landing lights now. And uh, the way to keep your engine nice and healthy is to monitor the CHR, uh, CHT. So I spend a lot of time doing that these days. We got a lot of uh, fuel flow going over those cylinders right now, and uh, our manifold pressure is saying a hair high. I'm not going to worry about it just yet. And uh, let's switch our tanks over to the left tank here. Let's confirm we're on the left tank down here, and we are. And you'll see that 354 is staying nice and steady. Went up just a hair because we're we're going to be climbing hard here for about uh, let's see 1,200 feet a minute. We need uh, 8,000, so about another six and a half, seven minutes we're going to be climbing. Now, if that thing starts to go up dramatically, what I do is I just tip down my indicated airspeed to 130-ish. In fact, I'll, let's just do that right now and see what impact it has on our climb rate. 
only gets us about 200 feet less of climb, but it'll also Number keep, two here, should Coast keep this altitude. baby here, this CHT, from going up. Let's see if that holds true. Echo radar, contact, contact, and while we're doing that, let's enjoy the view here, off to the right. <laughs> California, it's expensive. I don't know that I'd trade it. The views are pretty good. We are out the window again. Okay, once I get up to cruise altitude, there'll be a little time in there, and I'll see if anybody's got questions or any of that kind of stuff. And I don't know about you guys, but uh, particularly here on the western U.S., the price of fuel at 100 low has yeah, gone through the roof. And so on some of these practice flights that I might normally do in the plane, uh, I've been doing more of them here in the comfort of my office on my Cirrus flight sim here. And uh, you get all the great practice of dealing with ATC, which is what I love that ATC direction. But you're not paying six bucks a gallon because right now I would probably spend about a hundred bucks already. <laughs> All right, so you'll see down here our our temps. Let me go up close here for you. Our temps have actually gone gone down two degrees here by going tipping the plane down and going at a little bit faster speed read, a little bit lower climb uh, uh, angle. And we're still getting a good thousand feet a minute. Now you can't see it, but I'm now just taking my feet off the uh, the rudder pedals. I don't know why. I, I back to my initial training days. The, the Cirrus has the yaw damper, which is just fabulous. Uh, but I find myself with my hands on the control even when I'm flying autopilot. Uh, just in case something goes. All right, so now one of the things I love when I'm flying here is this little kind of preview. Give me a, gives me an idea of what we're doing. So I'm going to go switch over to 291, move my heading bug, and so that when the plane turns, I get in the, that habit of, uh, of making believe that autopilot kicked out of me and I had to do this by hand. So in that scenario, I would just switch to 291 and I'd go in heading mode and uh, and flip over there which I've done here okay oxygen is required now so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the throttle quadrant I'm going to move it up just a little bit so you can see this and I'm going to click on the oxygen here and you can see we've got a full tank of oxygen right here but just to confirm that, I'm going to go click on this button here. We're going to go to engine. Once you're flying with oxygen, this is something that becomes part of my engine instrument, you know, monitoring Remember during the trip, anti-icing, and my oxygen. So right now, that represents, you rarely can, I'm not even sure you can fill the tank up to 2,000 without something crazy happening. So full tanks of oxygen is about 1,800 pounds per square inch. And uh, so I keep an eye on that just to make sure something screwy doesn't happen. And then back to the map. Okay, we're 13,000, almost at 16. Now let me just do something. I'm going to throw it up there. And then see if you guys will tell me if it actually went in there or not. Uh, I'm going to go with my cockpit iPad, which I can't see. I, I, I'm not able to monitor. I haven't figured out how to do a fourth monitor <laughs> with X-Plane so that I can kind of monitor what's happening on my streaming software so I can see what views you're seeing. Anyway, um, right here, um, I've got, let's get rid of uh, the fuel. Hang on, let me see if I can get this thing working properly. Let's get rid of 100 low lead fuel down here. And you can see that I always keep my iPad synced up with what's going on in the Perspective Plus on the PFD and MFD. And the off chance that uh, I had a failure on the PFD and MFD, I still have my backup, which is the iPad, which I'm pretty comfortable with. If I had to navigate to an airport that was VFR, I wouldn't want to do a, an instrument approach with this, but or, or an instrument approach in real IMC, I would probably just bail for the nearest uh, 
nearest airport that had VFR. Anyway, I keep those synced up there. And uh, so this kind of shows you where we are on the thing. And typically I'll have my, even when I'm flying IFR, I'll have my VFR charts available because they give me a bit more detail. So it also shows that little uh, green flight glide circle, which would show up on the G6, uh, uh, I don't know about the G5 perspective, but perspective plus you now have the glide ring. Uh, built into the, to the Garmin software on the MFD in map mode, not when you're in flight plan mode Better. with this. Okay. So there we are. So now, right now, I'm going to go check our scoreboard here, GPS mode, autopilot. We're heading direct Ventura to San Marcos, and we are now closing in on our cruise altitude. All right, so if you saw that iPad up there, I'm, by the time I get back to the chat board, you know, it, it hopefully will be off. Uh, if somebody could just let me know, did you see the iPad there? Always testing. I haven't streamed in a while, so you'll forgive my uh, faux pas here. Okay, we're coming up on 15.6. On my Cirrus, again, one of the great things I love about that Cirrus perspective is it's always keep, okay, well, giving you audible cues of what's going on. So right now, bing, I get a bell for 15.8, 200 below my selected altitude. And so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to our map. I'm going to hit, I mean, did our climb checklist. All that was good. But now we're going to go to our cruise checklist. Oxygen is required and on. Fuel pump is on. I'll keep that on. Cruise power. I'm going to pull our cruise power yeah, back. <coughs> First, I'm going to let it speed up now that the nose is down up to about 150 <coughs> is what I put it to on the, on the G6. And so let's get it to 150. And once I get to 150-ish, I'll start pulling that. Pull the, pull the manifold pressure back. It's 30.5 is what I'm looking for on mine. 29.5 is what I'm looking for here. Then I will pull back my mixture to about 16.2. will get me 75% here. And sure enough, there it does. There's 16. It's a little tricky here. And that's about the same on my Cirrus. Okay, mixtures required. Engine parameters: green, 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 green. You'll see the CHT temperatures are 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 nice and cool. Let's go up here to the. All right, CHTs are looking good. Engine parameters good. Fuel flow and balance is now set, and let's go back to the map. Okay, and uh, and I will go click enter, and then I got my descent checklist already preloaded. And then back to the flight plan. Back to the map. Okay, here we are, out over the ocean. Let's confirm. There we are. <coughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to do a little messing around here and go over to the chat board here for a second and see if anybody's still hanging around. All right. Uh, okay, so you're telling me I still have. Me to see this. Okay, I see. Uh, let's go back to cockpit direct. Pardon me there. Okay, I'm going to try to get rid of that cockpit with no uh, cockpit clean here. Oh, let's just go here. There we go. How's that? There we go. All right, back over to the. Uh, well, we got a little time here. Um, are you planning a long cross country? Mark Trees on your last cross country. Will you be uploading the New York portion, Statue of Liberty, etc.? I will, Mark. Uh, I'm slowly, obviously, working through all that stuff. I, pardon my lack of speed, it just takes so freaking long to, to edit a video. And I've kind of been going a little bit out of sequence, but yes, I will get to New York, or certainly the uh, the, the little pass up past the Statue of Liberty, etc. Um, okay, pa iPad is still up. Okay, got that. Okay, now somebody confirmed that the iPad has gone away. I'm looking at it right now. We should just be looking at the view from behind the plane over the mountains. 
All right. There's X plane rent you a car <laughs> so you can do some golfing and pass the tempo. Uh, no, I'll have to rent that car, but I will be playing uh, pass the tempo. That's a great golf course. Just love that place. It's a little like my home track at uh, at Bel Air. So um, that one's always fun to play. Number three seven nine Kilo Romeo, Big Show Tower, and I three zero right. All righty. So we're just. Uh, anybody's got any other questions here? I'm ready to answer anything here. Okay. Um, don't you just love the internet, gentlemen? <laughs> you know, you got ATC, almost like the real thing. And I say they, these Please are all echo, qualified so controllers. Uh, not quite as hectic as it might normally be with calls, but certainly enough to keep your your chops up there. Is this a Torx Sim plane? Yes, it is. It's the Torx Sim SR22 Turbo Normalized version, which is based on a G3 Cirrus. Um, I do have, you can't see it right here. I'll have to hook up a different cam for you to see it, but I, I have a real Sim Gear FMS setup that's for the G6, not the G5. So what you, you'll see on the, the flight sim model is not quite the same is what I'm, is what I'm using to enter in the information. But it's uh, having this little flight stack here with the Cirrus throttle quadrant and the Cirrus side stick uh, makes this almost like flying my Cirrus without any of the bumps. So, uh, Mark, where are you from? I forgot where you're from. All right. All right, so we're cruising along okay, here. Fox shot, center of the ground, my one five right tack to Charlie. Because now typically this is about an hour and 20 minute flight here. Ah, Mark, you got the noble flight sim set up. Uh, that's, I was having a discussion. A couple of discussions this week with uh, serious pilots that are contemplating getting a Cirrus sim set up and uh, I was telling him the Noble Flight Sim gear I think is much more true to the actual Cirrus equipment where the real sim gear is a little bit more G1000 adapted to uh, to Cirrus. You know, there's not that much difference between the real sim gear and the uh, and and a normal G1000 setup. So I've seen a video on my website of my sim setup. I've actually blocked out the keys and buttons that I wouldn't use on the G1000 to kind of do my best to replicate it. Um, and uh, so that's what I've done. I'm from Georgia. We have spoken to you. I will be training with Ed Waters. Well, Mark, I'm here to tell you you are in good hands with uh, Rockin' Ed Waters. And uh, learned a lot from Ed. All right, so I'm going to go take, let me see, I'm, I'll be back to you in a second if I lose you guys. I'm going to go back over here to the flight plan here. Uh, you can see we got a little bit of a fuel imbalance on the right-hand side, so I'm going to go down to the throttle quadrant, and I'm going to flip that baby over, confirm it back up top, and uh, now I will come back over here and see if I can go back to... Uh, Chat room. I'm juggling some balls here. Um, so, Mark, how'd you get hooked up with Ed? Well, I, and what are you using for your ATC interface? It's a great little plug-in called Pilot Edge. And for folks that are training today, when I first started training about four years ago, um, the level of serious stuff wasn't even in the ballpark to where it is today. And I wasn't familiar with uh, Pilot Edge. I found out about it somewhere online. And it really is a game changer in terms of um, giving you some realism of what it's like to fly in the ATC system, and particularly great if you are um, flying IFR. Uh, so Mark is taking delivery of my SR-22 November 2nd. <laughs> I'm sure you got that circle highlighted, color highlighted on your calendar. I will be Ed within Knoxville. You, you'll be with Ed in Knoxville and then some follow-up training. If you're a golfer, Mark, uh, I should uh, tell you if you don't already know that Ed is a uh, member in good standing at the fine, legendary Pinehurst Country Club. And when I did my uh, delivery in Knoxville with my wife, um, one of the gentlemen there 
guys, young kids who worked it. Sirius hooked me up with Ed. Kid was a big Incubus f- fan, a band I used to manage in, uh, in, a, in another life here. And uh, he knew I was a golfer, so he hooked me up with Ed. And, and we did all of our training. Uh, we flew from Knoxville to Pinehurst, and we trained each day and played some golf when we were done. Um, oh. oh, I got you hooked up with that. Okay. Um, you know, you must have, Ed must have liked you because he's the busiest guy in aviation, I'll tell you. It's tough to get on that schedule. But you were in, you were in great hands there. And uh, Ed is just top of the line on, on, on every level. I love that guy. Anyway, um, all right, so I'm going to go back and do a little, not training. I'm just going to give you some tips. Okay, at this point in the flight, what I would do is now I've got some time on my hands. Obviously, I'm chatting with you a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over. This what I would do all of this on my MFD. There's some features built into the uh, to the Cirrus system here that are not part of the Torx Sim model where you can set your frequencies through the MFD. But since I don't have that, I'm going to just go over and let's see. I'm going to put the uh, iPad back in there. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to just click on K- KWVI and I'm going to go in here to the info as we make our turn into Victor 25. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start putting down some frequencies here. Uh, I'm going to put them first on my flight sheet, which I would have done ahead of time, but I'm just sitting here messing around in the office. So I got ATIS. Um, CTAF there is 122.8 at uh, Whiskey Victor. Um, and what is ground? Okay, so it's all the same there. So I got one, two. So here's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to go, first off, I'm going to go back so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to switch down to com, uh, to COM2. I'm going to put in 132. 275. And I'm going to flip that into active. And then I'm going to flip uh, put the tower, which is the CTAF, which is 122.8. I thought there was a tower there. Maybe it's just during the day. So now that I have those in there, what I'll do is I'll come down here to the, uh, not flaps and comms. Okay, so what I'll do down here now is I like to just put the comm in monitor, right? Now, a ways away from uh, Watsonville, we've got, you know, 172 miles, as you can see up here. Um, so that comm button being, you know, monitoring the, the, the ATIS on, on COM2, uh, once it starts crackling and trying to come in, it's my reminder that I'm getting close to the run to the airport. And, and it's, it's a way to remind me of something ahead of time. But it's all part of the, the best lesson I've ever learned about flying IFR, which is there's if you've got time to talk, you've got time to program everything. Okay, so you can see right here I, I need to go in and resync my heading here. Uh, on the Perspective Plus for markets, when you get your new SR22, there's a great little feature called Heading Sync that moves that heading with you on a GPS flight plan so that every time the plane turns, in this case, to 324, instead of me having to sync it like I did here manually, it automatically syncs it. It's a great uh, mistake eliminator or mitigator in the sense that if right now they gave me a heading for traffic um, and I'm on a 270 I'm on a different heading and I hit heading and all of a sudden the plane is turning left uh, to a different direction the heading sync function it takes that ugly mess out of the equation there so let's go back up top all righty to come back over here, Las take a few, uh, see Angeles what else is going on. I'm gonna look, now I'm back looking at you guys here, and uh, let's see if we, let me go over here for one other second and see what we've got in here. Okay, so now I'm going to get rid of, there we go, back over here. Let's see if uh, something else happens here. Oh, there I am. Hello, gents. All righty. 
I'm gonna get rid of that guy right now. Uh, All right. Um, I told you, Schuessler says I told him I I will buy him a round of golf. Ha ha. Well, he's a member there, so uh, you just probably have to pay him back. He plays for free out there at uh, Pinehurst. I don't know if you've ever played Pinehurst, Mark, but man. Doesn't get much better than that. All right, let's go back out to rear view here. And uh, okay, Ray, that iPad should be gone by now. I'm now looking at my streaming software to see uh, the view I have. I got to find out a way. This is when I need to find me some young computer geek that can really help me out on stuff like this. I'm trying to figure out how to hook up a fourth monitor that's separate where I can have access to my USB controller which can controls all the views and so forth but also lets me see what view that you guys are looking at um, the streaming's fun but it's a lot of work here unfortunately it's quiet out tonight here and if I miss something I know the ATC guy's going to bust my balls if we're not paying attention alright so let's go uh, I'm going to go back over here into the program here again Ooh, I don't want that no 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 get rid of that I get rid of that. I got some weird thing. Oh, there it is. Oh crap. Oh Christ. Okay, now I screwed something up big time here, guys. Okay, I'm looking at a weird view here now. Oh, I just. Thank you. Quick visual approach on way eight. Contact tower one eight point seven. I don't know what you guys are seeing now. Oh man, I screwed something up here, gents. Okay, I managed to screw this up here, gents. Somehow, how do I... Okay, there we are, back Zero again. Heads on Fox Shot, Santa Barbara departure, resume on navigation, cancel altitude restrictions. All right, now I've lost my uh, MFT, so now I'm going to have to do this like old school. Old school X-Plane, so I'm now just having to look at my screen here to see what's going on. I've lost my PFD here for the Here, mess around with it now. All right, so we are 53 minutes from Santa Cruz, Watsonville. Oh, wow. So I see we have some real bona fide. We've got some real bona fide IFR here at, uh, I'm going to put up the cockpit iPad here again. Let's see if I can get that straight. Let me see if I got this. Let's see what you guys are seeing again here. All right, there's the iPad. So you can see right now we've got some uh, serious low IFR. 240 at 5, 7 miles of visibility, overcast at 400. So. Okay, so let's just check procedures. We've got a, a, an approach of 24. We're going to have the RNAV 2. So the wind was not much of a wind, really. So we're going to come in on runway 2 over the ocean. Perfect, thank you. Okay. All righty, there's where we're going to be heading here. So I'm going to I'm going to load this approach in here on my iPad for right now just so you can get a look at what this looks like. Approach we want uh, the RNAV GPS runway 2, which means we'll be coming in over the ocean. Okay, let's get it plugged in there. RP. Okay, and 
close. Okay, let's go back and try that one more time. Procedure, we want approach, GPS 2. Let's go back. American 2479, the ramp is on controls. Let me know when you're holding short of the active taxi. We're ready for taxi. And we want, oh, I got to pick a entry point, so we're going to go Salinas into there. And then we're going to add that to our route. And there's our, there we go. All right, so that gives you an idea how the, the one way to use four flight. I kind of juggle sometimes between the two of them, um, but that is a great way to stay ahead of the game here. So that's what I'm going to be looking for here. So now I'm going to go back into the flight plan here. <laughs> I'm going to go up here into our um, instrument view here. And I'm going to go ahead and load that approach right now. So I'm going to go select approach. RNAV GPS LPV2, and we're going to use Salinas since it's already on our flight plan. The, uh, let's go back to the plate over here. Oops. And the plate says that the minimum is 448. So I'm going to put that in here 448. That's 450, we'll call it enter, enter. Now that is loaded. And uh, you'll see right here, our minimum is loaded here on our PFD as well. So, all right, there we go. Now let's see if we got any questions here. It's a lot harder doing this than it is flying the plane, I'll tell you that. Okay, uh, you might be able to get an HDMI splitter for your fourth monitor and it would mirror the monitor that you hook it to. Well, that's the problem is that when I'm mirroring the monitor, Jason, it winds up wanting to put, you know, the the three monitors, my Samsung monitor, which is my big monitor, and monitors two and three are the PFD and MFD, and I did actually get a little splitter, and somehow I could not make it work where I could just get all of, you know, the stuff out there. It's my own lameness. I'll, I'll do some more investigation on the splitter here, because it sure would make it a lot easier. Uh, now I have everything up here. I have my stream deck and I have my uh, YouTube page up here. And uh, and let's just see what you guys are looking at. I'll go click on OBS Studio and you're looking at that. And uh, if I move this over okay, now, you, you now you're looking at the uh, flight plan. Okay, great. Uh, Pad is still up. Okay, great. All right, so this is interesting here today, gents, uh, in the sense that when I first started flying out, there was a video somewhere on, on my YouTube channel of me actually flying into uh, Watsonville with a buddy of mine uh, who is a golfer, and we went to play Pasa Tampa. He's also the guy that left the banana in my plane on the floor <laughs> and uh, he's the reason you can only drink water in my plane now and I told him if you ever drop another banana in my plane instead of the garbage uh, I'll let the air out of the tires on your old Mooney. Uh, actually I'm only half kidding I wasn't going to let the air out of his tires but he did get an earful of that banana. Anyway punchline is that uh, I probably wouldn't have felt comfortable coming in on an approach at 400 uh, above the, the runway. Uh, but after flying a bunch and doing a lot of work on the sim, uh, I feel much more comfortable with that now. So today is one that I would come in and do one at 400. So we're going to try that tonight on the sim and see how I do with that. All righty. Okay, so now we're just flying. This is where uh, I get a lot of comments about from folks that wondering if I could fly the plane without autopilot. And uh, I can. <laughs> um, and one of the reasons that it makes it a lot easier, I use Flight Director a lot. And I, I notice there are a lot of old school pilots. I shouldn't say old school pilots that are, have been trained on traditional you know, steam gauges um, who... God bless them. They had to learn, you know, to do it the really hard way. Um, but I've only ever flown with digital equipment, you know, the glass panel stuff. So uh, I'm only too happy to have 
autopilot, but I do fly a decent amount. Flew down to San Diego the, San Diego the other day, um, all by hand, and there's really nothing different that I do in the plane other than I just manually keep these two wings tucked together here. And uh, in the Cirrus perspective, it gives you just some wonderful situational awareness on everything. And uh, so I use Flight Director a lot, and if that makes me less of a pilot, so be it. I'm okay with that. Um, because I can't imagine getting a plane like a Cirrus and not using all of the, uh, the tricks that you have at your disposal. Not tricks, features. That all make it a lot easier and a lot less um, mentally taxing. Uh, flying a plane because on a long cross-country trip god bless the guys that do it without autopilot boy i'll tell you that I, I think i'd just rather buy a ticket that's a lot of mental workout to, to constantly be keeping your heading within five degrees each way and keeping your altitude you know within 50 feet um you know, the air moves and it's just a lot of work so um uh, happy to have the Cirrus here. Okay, let's go. You know, I'm going to come back to you guys and see if there's any, uh, see what's going on here. Shane T, there he is. Hey, Shane, how you doing, man? All right, this is that point where I'd be flipping on the XM radio. And uh, listen to some tunes here. Can't do that. And uh, and I, I found one of the people wonder some why why sometimes the videos take longer to get out than normal is because as soon as I hit XM radio, I bring all kinds of songwriting, music publishing issues into the mix here. So I wind up having to edit some of that stuff out or trying to filter it out, and it's, you know, it's a pain. Um, I've been working on a, a video this past week of a flight from uh, the Hamptons up to Cape Cod, and uh, nice flight, one that was memorable, one of the flights that my wife and I were looking forward to, and it just never fails that I get some camera will fail on me at an inopportune moment and then you wind up having to try to sync the audio and the visuals and it just is a killer. All these guys that win those Academy Awards for editing, I have newfound respect for all of those guys. So anyway, good to see you here tonight, Shane. And by the way, I concur, technology is great. Use it. Um, uh, on my second Tesla is as well now. Actually, our third. I, I traded in my original. Not traded. I sold my original Tesla and um, got two Teslas now. One for me, the Model Y, and one for my wife. So we're all Tesla family now. <coughs> my my youngest son has a Prius, and uh, my oldest son has a gas guzzling, whatever. So sexy Ford Explorer. All righty. Appreciate you guys hanging out here tonight. Shane, you got a Tesla too, man. Which one did you get? Got a Model S. Got two Model S's. Uh, it's, they're 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 amazing cars. When people, uh, some of my golfing buddies or friends, ask me to describe my Cirrus. I tell him it's a Tesla with wings. That's what it is. All right, let's see Next what we... Okay, so I'm going to do something here, gentlemen, that you can't do in the... Uh... Actually, I can't remember how to do it now. Does anybody remember the key stroke to speed things up a little bit? Is it... Uh... Is it Alt-T <coughs> in X-Plane to speed things up? Destination ASOS is 132.275. All 
Alrighty, I am going to see if I can call ahead. See if we can speed up a hair. See what we got here. Two zero four Echo, contact SoCal departure one one nine airpoint. Actually, two zero four Echo, if you'd like to be changed to Gillespie Towers of Group. Okay, it is all T. LA Center, Sierra 768, Foxtrot Sierra, it's 16,000. Uh, when's my next frequency change? I'm looking to see if I can uh, increase my speed a little bit. 768, Foxtrot Sierra, have another frequency change uh, in about the next 10 or so miles. Okay, I'll wait for that and then uh, I'll speed up from there. Thank you. Uh, this is a perfect example. Somebody was asking about cross-country trips. This this is your cross-country trip where all the action is in the beginning and in the end with you know just enough in between to keep you from falling asleep. One of the things I've learned to do um, up in my own plane, and I haven't done it because I've been talking to you a lot, is uh, I'm going to go switch over to my left tank here. Let's just see if we go to throttle quadrant. Let's go over to the left tank here, back here. Is to uh, monitor my engine temps and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go press the uh, engine button here. And you can see here that we've got good speed. We've got all that stuff going on here. We've got uh, used a little bit. We're at 1,670 on my uh, oxygen level here. Uh, but what I'll typically do at this point in the ball game is I will start writing down every 30 minutes. I have a little reminder that comes up. So I would note my EGTs. I would note my CHTs. I would note uh, my oil temperature, oil pressure, and uh, fuel flow. And uh, I keep a running tab of that. So every 30 minutes I'm checking that, A, to make sure that if anything starts to change that I ho hopefully can get on that early. And, and, and B, because it, it, it keeps me engaged in the flight. Uh, for Oakland, thank you, 8 Foxtrot Sierra. There's 128, let's go 7. Up on COM2 here, 128.7. Okay, boom. Switch it over and let's come back up top. Oakland Center, Sierra 768, Foxtrot Sierra level 16, 16,000. 768, Foxtrot Sierra, Oakland Center, pass the rolls, altimeter 10 or 82. 29 or 82, 8 Foxtrot Sierra. Number 25, Delta Bravo, radar service is terminated. Can I press get tower 125.3? Okay. Charlie Golf, Mike Whiskey Tango, Connect Seattle Center. Have a good night. Oakland Center, Sierra 768, Foxtrot Sierra. Can I uh, speed up a little bit on the, on the X plane? Kodiak 25 Delta Bravo, Prescott Tower on our left, down our right, two on left, Corpus Field. Fox shots here, that's approved. Uh, I'm going to go eight times. When is uh, going to be the next frequency change that I'll discuss um, approaches to Watsonville? Uh, about 60 miles. I'll, I'll flag you down if I uh, see you still going. No worries. 60 miles. Thank you so much. Eight Fox shots here. Yep. Okay, so let's go to our rear view now. We're going to go ball yeah, one, two, three. Two, three. Two, We're going to go eight times speed here. Sixty miles, he said. So that's going to put us at about wiggle. Okay.
Now you notice the uh, sim has a tough time keeping up with all the turns at this speed here. We'd only be going about a thousand miles an hour here. But it's going to shave a few minutes off this because I got dinner waiting here. The wife's uh, waving, waving at me. In a minute. She's used to this. <laughs> okay, so we're coming up. Uh, wiggles where we we'll want to make the move. Check your ones here, Charlie Rogers. Stand by and hello. Here, moving uh, moving along here now. Sync up that heading. That works for me. So once here, Charlie, cleared fairground visual and right through left approach. Papa, ground okay, so I'm going to slow her down a little bit now. Okay, so now we're getting in the neighborhood here. Our we're going to take down our 8s here. We got our uh, 2989 is our altimeter. So I'm going to put in 2989. 220 at 5 is our wind. That's the important one. We're going to. Okay, so now that I've got that, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to flip this one over into tower now and go back up top here. Okay, let's just see if there's any questions before I go and do this approach here. Eight Fox Sierra, connect Norcal approach 121.3. 121.3, eight Fox Sierra. That one in there, one, two, one point three. Okay, let's switch it over. NorCal approach Sierra seven six eight Foxtrot Sierra level one six sixteen thousand. Sierra seven six eight Foxtrot Sierra. NorCal approach to center maintain one zero thousand. Let me know you have the one minute weather Watson doing while your approach quest is. Uh, I just sent one zero thousand. My request is the GPS runway two, and I've got uh, the weather eight five shots here. Okay, so I'm going to set ten thousand here now. There's ten. I'm going to go start down at seven hundred feet a minute. So I want to get down there. Eight five shots here across Salinas. At our about five thousand, cleared hard at runway two approach in Watsonville. Ross Salinas at, at or above 5,000 clear for the approach into Watsonville, 85 shots here. Thank you. Okay, so now this is good. We'll get a chance to use the BNAP. Okay, so. Uh, we're going to be parking at the transient parking down between Delta and Echo. We're going to go to Salinas, then we're going to switch over Delta here, and we're going to put in 5,500. Enter. So now what I've done is I've given myself a VNAV, and you'll see that we need to start moving quickly to get there. 
So I'm going to pull some power here, big time. I'm going to go to 5,000 here for Salinas, which I don't think we're going to make Salinas at 5,000. So I'm, I'm pulling power big time here because we got a whole lot of ways to get down to 5,000. And I'm going to set VNAV here. As you can see, we need to get 2,700 feet a minute to get there. So I'm going to give it as much as I can give it right now here. Let's go 1,500. Now, this wouldn't normally be recommended, Hotel gentlemen. Approach once here, Charlie, is the Lexington Reservoir at my 3 o'clock or my 6 o'clock? Catch 6 o'clock. Hurry! One of these days, you'll use your georeference charts and navigraph. That's a fine idea. All right, so now I'm pulling some power here. There's no way I'm going to get to 5,000. It's because I used that speed up thing, and I took took getting to the right altitude out of the equation here. So, um, so now what I'm going to do is, I, did I load that approach? I did. No way I'm going to get there in time. All right, so I'm really, really pull power here. <laughs> Did I load the approach? No, select approach. Yeah, I did. That's where I want to be. It's 5,000 there. 5,000. Enter. He said we're cleared for the approach, so I am going to go direct, Where enter, enter, Bottom clear. and click the approach. Hello, American 7285. We have Oscar ready to copy clearance to San Francisco. I have American 7345. Is that you? That is correct. American 7345, go to the San Francisco Airport, Zephyr. I'll be done with this in about 10 minutes here. I've, uh, the I'll, I'll six, talk to you about 10 minutes. Roger frequency 109.2, squawk 5467. See, now right here on the uh, G6, I can put those flaps in at 150, and I'd be slowing down big time. And have a shot to reach Back this. If I do it on this flight sim model, I'm going to overspeed the flaps big time here. Well, let's just see if we're going to be able to get even cl anywhere close to these. Okay, my final initial approach fix is risky. I need to be at Fox off at 2,000 feet here. Uh, yeah, you can't do that, so you got to request a handoff. Initially, verify squawking mode C. That'll see your transponder. Uh, maybe it's not working. All right, we got a chance to get there because we're going to make a left turn to Rispy, and we need to be at... 2,000 at Fox Off. So I think we're going to get there. Because the airport's on the other side of that bay we're seeing in front of us. And there's our little turn to Rispy now. We should be at 4,000 at Rispy. No way we're going to get there. <coughs> Actually, maybe we will. Time to top of descent. Let's go set our altitude to 2,000. So we were at or above. We were well above. <laughs> Pick up that heading again. All right, let's make believe we're flying some real IFR here, and this is all we got. 
Use our left clear to land once you're Charlie. We're nine miles to Rispy. We're at 8,000. We need to be 4,000 at Rispy, so this is good. We might get there. Got VNAV is loaded. Number 8675 uniform. Still not seeing your transponder turned on, sir. You can see right here. We got VNAV loaded right here. It's a little bit, looks a little bit different on my uh, setup. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to get it switched over. flight here. I don't think this is going to show us, you know, I have the uh, time set on X-Plane. I'm just noticing for a different time, so it's not going to show me the the real 400 feet. We'll just have to imagine here. Okay, Rispy, am I going to get to Rispy at 4? Maybe. Maybe we can get there. We got 1,450. I think we actually will get there. I need 1,073 feet a minute to get there, so I'm going to, since VNAV is not kicked in yet, we're above it. Let's go here down to the to the inset. Let's go back, actually. We want PFD. We want synthetic vision here, so we get all of our tricks, including that uh, pathways coming in here. Okay, so we're getting ready to go. Yeah, I think we're going to get to Check Rispy at 4. Five, uniform. I do have your radar contact now, 6 miles northwest of Fresno, say altitude. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and do my descent checklist here. Altimeter is set. Let's get our landing light on. Fuel system is good. Brakes is required. Good. Before landing, I got my seatbelt on. I got my fuel pump is good. Got good speed now. I can give it some more power here. And I can put in some, we don't need the flaps just yet. Mixture is good. Autopilot's going to stay with us for right now. On and back over here. Rispy at 4. Am I going to get to Rispy at 4? We've got 3.6 miles. As you can see over here, this is what I look at. This is a vertical speed required. I've got 950 meters. So I'm going to get there in time. Maybe I'm not. Just a tick down. I need 875. I think we're going to get there. I'm at 2,000. Okay, and then I'm going to go. I'm just going to check our missed approaches. Climb 700, then climbing left turn to 6,000. Direct showy. Okay. So let's go to our map now so you can see where we're at on this. We're heading to Rispy, and then we're going to be making a little turn along the ocean here. We've got 120, which is good speed right now. We're going to get to Rispy at 4. Okay, there's Rispy at four. We're going to make it, I think. We are going to make it. There it is. Beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little power in there. Making the turn. I'm going to give it full mixture now. Now we want to be Ifafi at three. Time to top of descent. We got two minutes. Okay, so I've got it set. Okay, our 3,000 up here is our next VNAV reference. VPath is now armed, so I'm good there. I'm going to sync up my heading here. I got my power at 40%. I still don't have flaps in. But time to top of descent to get to that 3,000 is going to be a minute and 40 seconds. Okay, so we're looking good. <clears throat> See if anybody's still there with us here. Got a minute and 40. 
it here. All right. Uh, does the sim have the banana? No, it does not. <laughs> Steven, <laughs> ah. <laughs> so yeah, well, unfortunately, we don't get to fly a thousand miles an hour here. So maybe he's able to speak to Tower TOA. I agree. This is beautiful. So, all right, I'm going to get back to flying here and see if we can get this pup down here. This is where I need to concentrate here and so I'm going to do that. Ifafi, so we're one minute from top of descent. This is another thing. I love about the VNAV. So for you serious pilots or, one, or, or people that are contemplating being a serious pilot, one of the, my favorite features is VNAV because it helps you manage the descent. So uh, once you've got everything set, I've got, that's our next VNAV reference altitude, which is 3,000. This calculates how long it's going to take before we settle down. And once we do that, V path is going to kick in. We have, um, we're on our initial approach fix into Ufafi. We're all set, I believe. And we're going to make that turn up here at Ufafi. So now, if this was really 400 feet, we'd be in the clouds right now, likely. And this is basically all you'd see. I, I'll tilt it up just to here. And when I'm flying, I'll literally pull down that visor in front of me so I have no temptation to look outside the plane. I'm all in. Uh, right now we'll do a quick look to the right here. And so you can see that, you know, because I didn't set the uh, settings to today's time, weather and all that stuff. A, it's brighter. Up and B, there's no clouds out here because it's a different day, I presume. Um, we've got good speed coming in here. i got no flaps in yet. So once I make that turn into Fafi, I'll put some flaps in here. CGMWT. Did VPATH kick Captain in? No, it did not. VPATH did not kick in here for some reason. So now, okay, so now I'll just have to go to 3,000. So I'm going to hit vertical speed here and just go down. We got, i got to get down there quickly to a foffy. Now these are, the, okay, there's the turn, and now I want to get down to 2,000. Okay, so now let's go back up here. So I want to be at 2,000 at Foxoff. That's where I need to be to pick up the... Uh, okay, so now I'm going to pull some power again. And get some flaps in here. It doesn't really go to zero. Okay, now I'm going to put some flaps in here at 120. Bang. And now I'm going to get some power back here that nose down and there's 30 percent about where we'd want to be okay now we're looking good sync up my heading go back to the map here no, 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 we don't want to do that so let's go back to the map here now we are heading for the uh so now what i would do is my descent checklist we did that i've done my before landing checklist which is mixture full most important once we get the fox off, we should pick up flap over. See, okay, me. Okay, see, this thing's very sensitive. Okay, so I don't need quite that steep a descent now. So let's trim, trim it back a little bit to eight, nine hundred. Some little quirks in X plane here, I'll say. Yeah, we should be coming straight in here. Now, we wouldn't see the runway in a normal scenario. When I flew in, I believe when I flew in here on the video that we did a couple of years ago, we were in the clouds at this point. So this is where trusting your instruments is everything. So let's see if it's going to pick up the glide path when we get to Fox Off. So I'm going to give it some power back in there to stay ahead of the thing. Don't just kind of listen sometimes and you can feel where you're at. So I want to be around a hundy. Right here, so let's just let the power come out. Stay fast out here. Our traffic through between you and Watsonville. Report to our cancellation or missed approach in the air on this frequency. We're on the ground within five minutes after landing on one two two point two. Change to advisory frequency approved. I'm going to cancel IFR right now and switch to advisory. Eight Fox shots here. Here's a Fox shots here. Your IFR cancellation is received. Radar service is terminated. Squawk and maintain VFR. We'll see ya. Squawking VFR eight Fox shot. Squawking VFR eight Fox shots here. Switching to CTF. Okay, now I'm on. I'm going to go back to my, uh, okay, let's go back, whoop, 
Let's go to VFR here. Where is it? Back. Transponder. VFR. And now we're good. Should be picking up that. Watsonville traffic, Silver, Silver Cirrus uh, 2000, inbound on the RNAV 02, about six miles out for straight in to two. Watsonville traffic. Okay, now I wouldn't be seeing this normally, but I can see the runway out there. Let's just see if we're going to pick up the, uh, the glide path. So now we're eight, eight tenths of a mile here, so it's 2,000 feet. I'm on 2,000 feet. I'm on 99 knots, which is right where I want to be. Let's see if it's going to pick up the glide path. Getting a little closer here. There's the glide path. All right, great. And there is the, there's the pathway. So now at this point, I'm going to put in my flaps too. I'm going to hold that nose down a little bit. And I'll tell you what we're going to do, gentlemen, just to make make it feel a little bit more real. We're going to just keep it right here. So we can't see out the plane, and then we're going to wait till we get there. Our minimums, as you can see right here, is 450. At 450, I'm going to pop it up and look out the window and see how we're doing. Okay, we're all set now. I'm going to keep it on autopilot right now. We've got good speed. We're on the path, we're on the glide path, we're in the pathways. I've got the airport identifier straight in front of me, so if I'm in the clouds, I'm feeling pretty good because I practice this a lot. Oh, now we got a little clouds I can see out the window there. Okay, now I'm going to set our altitude for 6,000, which is our mist. If we have to go miss, we're going to be climbed to 700 and climbing left turn to showy. All of that is right here in the flight plan. So right now we're going to go back to the map so we can track it all the way in here. And we're just flying the plane and trusting right now. 800 to minimums. Got here. It looks like we're getting some real clouds. Okay, good. We're in some real clouds here now. Okay, excellent. Okay, we're in the clouds here. I got my visor pulled down. 700 to minimums. 2.8 to missed approach. On the glide path. Good speed. Got the flight path indicators on the front end of 0 02. That's exactly where I want it. I got 2.5 to missed, 500 to minimums. My instructor, Liz DeStefani, who now works for Cirrus, was very uh, adamant about calling off those altitudes 400 to minimums. minimums. One hundred minimums. Okay. And there's our runway. Autopilot off. There's the runway. That is a welcome sight. Okay, I'm going to pull a little power back here now. I'm going to start trimming it up. Autopilot is off. Got two reds, two whites. We're looking good. I'm going to trim as I reduce power. I'm always trimming. Reduce some more power. Trimming. Get her over the center line. Pulling power. Trimming. A little high. Pull some more power. Trim it up. Pull some more power. Runway made. Pull the power out, eyes down the runway. Pull the power out, let her slide. 
Boom. Right on the center line. Power's all the way out. Flaps coming up. Pulling back a little bit on the stick here. And there, a little jakey on the runway here. The pedals. All right. That was good. The smooth practice round. Then we're going to come in on the map. Zoom it in all the way. And we're going to get off on this taxiway up here. Okay, we'll get off right here. Watsonville traffic, silver, Watsonville traffic, silver, sear is clear, runway, active runway, taxiing to parking, eight box shots here. All right, and let's get her over here. And we'll put it right next to this guy right here. And then we'll call it a night. All righty, parking break on. Fuel pump off. Switch those back. Pull it off. Mixture back. And that is it. All right. Let me just say goodbye to everybody here. Let's go and see if anybody's still home here. All right. Um, is X plane free? No. <laughs> yeah, I know flight gear is, but isn't quite as pretty. Uh, X plane is worth every dime of whatever they charge. Um, <laughs> okay, I see. Cool stuff. My last thing was MS2000. I played with the uh, the new MS2020. It's great for kids. It's not if you're training. Vision Jet. I got a chance to fly a Vision Jet once. Um, I wish I had, I'd have to go back to work. <laughs> I need to sell a lot of t-shirts to pay for a Vision Jet. I'm happy in my SR22, though. Uh, great setup, Ray Cohen says. Just started my rating in Cirrus, and this would be such a great tool for training. Ray, I just had a conversation with somebody today about it and told him if he spent 10000 bucks um, with a flight sim setup, which is about what it cost me here, I reckon, um, it would be the best investment you ever made because you're going to use it for a long time. And um, I use it all the time, as you can see here tonight, just to keep sharp. And with Pilot Edge, it makes a huge difference. The, the immersion part of it is just terrific. And uh, I can't tell you how much I enjoy the thing. And, um, and right now, as I mentioned earlier, probably before you were here, it's six bucks a gallon for fuel these days. Um, I, a lot of the flying around just doing local approaches down in Southern California that I typically did a lot of, um, I'm not doing now. I'm flying those on my sim here at home. And uh, it's quite, um, it's very realistic. And uh, so I, I find it... Um, I don't regret a dime I've spent on the, on the simulator. And uh, it's actually made me a better pilot, more comfortable when I get in the plane after taking some breaks. Uh, we've done a lot of, the wife and I have done a lot of cross-country flying this year. And, and that's really the place all of, I feel like all that training I did and all the time I've spent really, really, comes and pays off on those cross-country trips and it's also a great place um to you know to to make it real when you get there when you when, when we've been in inclement weather or imc um you know my heart rate goes up for sure but i feel comfortable in it because uh, it's not unfamiliar territory so go out and get yourself um a sim setup ironically ray um Real Sim Gear is owned and run by an Australian guy who I think lives in Australia. Um, guy named Jared Barker, great guy, and uh, so maybe he can get you a good deal. Zach Norman, have a good night. Hey Zach, how you doing? Uh, glad you guys could all make it. I'm gonna go get my now cold dinner um, and uh, go play with my mutts. I see my my youngest son is uh, dropped by the house tonight too. So anyway, I want to thank all you guys for uh, joining me here tonight. It's been uh, fun hanging out with you, and uh, maybe we'll do another one of these. So uh, lights off here. Talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.